This is an ugly holiday sweater. Unlike other sweaters, this one wasn't woven or knitted. It was actually made using a 3D printer. And if you look closely, you'll probably notice a few differences. But before we get into those, let me tell you how I got here. The idea of 3D printing a sweater all started when I made this Instagram design competition for flipping some t-shirts using 3D printing. I'll be flipping these t-shirts that you guys designed in my next video, so make sure you check it out. And then this sketch came up. This was what started it all. I messaged the person who designed it, who also happens to be my cousin. In a few minutes, I completely switched the plan for my next video. I made this lovely sketch whilst fighting insomnia at 3 a.m. in my bed and started working on it the next day. So what are the things that make a sweater a sweater? During the design process, there were several factors that I thought needed to be considered. It's not a sweater if it doesn't feel like a sweater. So texture is definitely important. Second is the details of this wovenness and the fact that they keep you warm. And also the overall look of the piece, which in this case is primarily holiday tackiness. This is what we are aiming for with this 3D print how close can we get this to feel like an actual sweater and how many of these can we check off the list? If any at all, honestly. With the goal in sight, I started measuring t-shirts and modeling up a pattern for the sweater. So I sort of strategized my 3D printing process and came up with a few steps to help me print the pieces in the most efficient way. And this can definitely help you if you're thinking about 3D printing your own garment. The first is to take into account the bed size of your printer and make sure all of your pieces fit within that bed size. Second is to strategically divide your pattern, whether by integrating the seams into your design or by maybe keeping them symmetrical within the overall piece. And third is to make sure that you strategically number your pieces or name them. I mean, you don't want to lose track of this messy puzzle you've created for yourself. For example, I divided my pieces into four quadrants, like the Cartesian map quadrants, <laughs> and I grouped all my red pieces on the top, all my white pieces on the bottom, and then the pieces of, of the garment that were actually on the right, I kept towards the right, and well, the left, well, to the left. Then these, I further grouped them into front, back, and sleeve, and then each individual piece has its own number. Therefore, all of them would sort of have this library book code. And for example, this one is white, left, front, five. And that's the only piece of its kind. So for this project, I'm using the most flexible of flexible filaments in my position. And as for the printing of pieces, I'm using method number two, which is the info method from my five ways to 3D print fabric video. So if you haven't seen that, I highly suggest you watch. And I'll also leave my print settings in the description below. As I stored the pieces, I started storing them in this Ziploc bag, along with some of those tiny bags of pebbles that always come in like shoe boxes. Since I finally figured out they were actually for trapping humidity, the time to turn these pieces into a sweater had finally come. And using a 3D pen, I plan to sort of sol solder, weld, my pieces together. For the record, I'm using black filament because it was the only color available that would fit my 3D pen. And ideally, I would have gone for something like a transparent flexible filament or white filament, but none of these colors were available. So I tested it out on some scrap pieces for practice and then went straight into the garment. I also came up with like these melty melty technique in which I would take the nozzle of the 3D pen and rub it between both pieces so that they would sort of merge in a way <laughs> and then I would just seal it up with that black filament. It was much easier to do the vertical pieces first and then match up the two halves at the seam lines afterwards. So at this point, it kind of looked like Waldo. Before sealing up the sides, I glued the Christmas tree and the star to the front of the sweater. And now for the ugly, not so ugly additions. After twisting three stands of the fairy lights together, I strung them onto the tree and gathered some failed prints and extra pieces that I had left over from other projects, cut them up strategically, and stuck them onto the tree as well. <laughs> this stringy white print sort of turned into like a popcorn garland, and everything else just sort of became 
random circular Christmas decorations. I flipped the sweater inside out and sealed it up in the sides and the sleeves and she was ready to be revealed. <laughs> Now going back to that original list of goals, in terms of texture, I must say that it looks and feels very rubbery, which is unlike any sweater I've ever known. However, the visual texture of the piece is when you zoom in, actually looks somewhat similar to what an actual knitted weave would look like. Even so, I'm going to say that it honestly didn't quite get there texture-wise. When it comes to details, I tried to model some of unique to sweater detailing, like at the collar and at the sleeves, in which I tried to make that checkered knitted pattern that sweaters usually have. And I think it actually makes it distinguishable from afar. Like you can tell that that's like a sweater collar. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the cuffs in due to some measurement issues. My attempt was to have the sleeves be kind of puffy and gather at the cuff, but um, for some reason, the red pieces printed a little thicker than I anticipated, therefore gathering them was pretty hard to do, and then it would just not fit my hand if I had welded them together. The collar though, I think, still makes up for it, and the potential for the cuffs remains. When it comes to keeping you warm, the material at first will feel cold against your skin, but once you start dancing in it like a maniac, you can definitely break a sweat. I stepped outside for a second as well, and it was the total opposite. It was about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and I was freezing. Since the material also gets cool quicker than wool or knitted fabrics would, so in this aspect, it definitely does not compare to a warm, cozy sweater. And finally, I think it certainly falls under the ugly sweater aesthetic. Plus, it's got fairy lights. I'll say calling it a sweater is a bit of a stretch, but let's just say it's a torso covering, sweater looking, kitschy holiday wearable that's perfect for parties. Although I'm typically into making more fashion forward design exercises, this was really fun to make. And I'm curious to see if anyone looking for how to make like a normal holiday sweater would react <laughs> when they stumble upon this video.